1999, the UK government declined the Church of Scientology's application to register as a charity, saying that the church couldn't prove that it existed for the public benefit. Now, in this video, we're going to dissect that a little bit more and also look at what that means for the future and why the Church of Scientology is unlikely to get charity status here in the UK and why it operates through a shell company based in Australia. Stay tuned. So, as I mentioned, the Church of Scientology currently operates in the UK through a shell company called the Church of Scientology Religious Education College Incorporated, COSRECI for short. Um, so when I worked for the church as the director of public book sales at their London org, I got my pay slips, even though I didn't get paid very much. I did get a pay slip and I did pay tax on that income, um, which is shown in my personal HMRC tax uh, account online um, as being paid by uh, COSRECI, which is an Australian based non-profit organization. Now, there's a reason that the church doesn't operate through a UK based company here and that's because in 1999 they applied to become a charity and they were declined. I did a video on this earlier a few days ago about why they were declined and what the UK government said about Scientology but in this video I'm going to dissect what a charity is in the UK and why it's unlikely the church is going to ever get a charity status and why it might just be more effort and more hassle than it's worth for them um, because it's it's a little bit more protected here. Now, I think if we compare the UK setup to the US setup, it's very clear that things are a little bit different here. In the US, um, Scientology got their tax exempt status by saying we're a religion and therefore we don't have to pay tax. And then hounding the IRS, the um, American tax office, um, with thousands and thousands of lawsuits until they basically gave up um, and they gave them tax exempt status. Now, in the UK, it's a little bit different. Um, if you want to set up as a charity, which means you don't pay tax on your income and a load of other things, um, you can't just say, I'm a religious organization. We, we exist for a religious purpose and therefore we, we get the charity status. There is a clause that says you have to prove you exist for the public benefit. Now, this is um, a really protective clause that shows you can't just set up um, something and, and claim you're tax exempt because you're religious even if you are religious you have to show that you're you're helping your community or helping the local area or, or helping the group of people that you're aiming to help now I want to dissect this a little bit further so when we look at um, how we got paid as staff members, there's a lot of questions I get about this and how we got away with not receiving minimum wage. So I wanted to share first off the rules on minimum wage here in the UK. Now, in order to um, have any sort of paid job in the UK, you have to get at least the minimum wage, which is set by the government. Um, and it's pretty much anyone who works in any sort of job, you get the minimum wage. Um, there is a slightly lower rate for apprentices if you're learning or, or something like that. You can get paid a little bit less, but you still have to be paid a certain amount. Um, and there are some exceptions to the rule. So these are the people who are not entitled to the win minimum wage. So self-employed people, company directors and so on, armed forces, um, and the list goes on. But this is where Scientology come in. People living and working in a religious community. So if you're working or living in a religious community, you're not entitled to the minimum wage. Now, it's a bit of a tricky one here because there is no body that um, verifies whether something is or isn't a religion in the UK um, law or government. So even though Scientology isn't a charity and therefore isn't tax exempt and therefore doesn't exist for the public benefit, that doesn't mean they're not a religious organisation. So this is how they got around it when we got our paychecks every week we would be classed as religious volunteers. So we wouldn't be paid minimum wage. The amount we earned was based very much on how much the church made the following the, the week before or, or the week before that even. Um, and how much we earned on a weekly basis was based on that. Um, we weren't ever paid minimum wage, um, but they don't have to, by law, pay minimum wage for religious 
volunteers. Now, if we look a little bit more into charities, it's going to be a little bit more of a headache um, for the church if they were to become a charity than if they were to carry on operating as they currently are. Now, as a charity in the UK, you have to spend, um, I'm pretty sure it's 100% of your income, you have to spend all of your money on whatever cause it is your charity exists to try and help. You're allowed to have a reserve and have savings to help, you know, ensure the charity can carry on existing and so on um, but you have to really clearly define that um, if we look again at this website here this is the the um, gov website again on managing charity finances um, if we go down we can look here it says if your charity does not spend all of its income, um, you know, your charity would have to have a reserve policy um, and that explains whether your charity is aiming to keep a reserve of unspent income or um, what it will be used for and why this is reasonable. You have to check your charity sticks to this policy or can explain why it does not. You have to keep very accurate financial records and you have to show details of all the money received and spent, examples of bank statements and so on, assets and liabilities. Um, you have to keep these records for six years or three years, so on. Um, but these documents become publicly available. If you are a charity, you have to upload these documents to the charity commission who verify them to make sure that you are actually doing as you say and you're not just keeping hordes of cash and reinvesting it in property or whatever like they do in the states that wouldn't fly here in the uk the charity commission would say look you may be reinvesting all of this money and spending it but you're not spending it for the public benefit so you they're really on it here in the uk and you'd have to prove that you're spending your money on actually benefiting um, your members or the people you're trying to help so all of those documents become publicly available. So if the church were to be a charity, it would open up their financial records here um, way more than they currently are, um, which is one of the reasons I wonder if they're just not in any particular rush to become a registered charity here because they don't want to expose all their finances. At the moment, they spend a lot of their money um, on property and renovations and things like this which is fine to do it's okay according to the charity law to do that um but you have to spend the majority of money of your money on on the public benefit now finally i want to look through this a little bit more this is what the charity commission say about running a charity and what it means to exist for the public benefit now you've got to remember this is why the church was declined charity status in 1999 was because the uk government the charity commission said you haven't proven to us that you exist for the public benefit. Now, it very clearly states in here some very interesting things, which is why it didn't apply to the Church of Scientology and why it still does not. So to satisfy the public aspect of public benefit, you must benefit the public in general or a sufficient section of the public, not just you know certain people that are subscribed to your, um, your church or whatever. You have to exist to help the majority of people or a large number of people. If we're looking at deciding who benefits, um, it's really clear you must not exclude the poor from the benefits of what your charity is doing. As a charity, you have to be as open and inclusive as possible. And by excluding poor people, um, the Church of Scientology would never ever um, in a million years get their tax exam status, their charity status here, because nothing in Scientology is free. You can go to a Sunday service, which they do every Sunday in the church, um, which is a free group auditing session. There are a limited number of things that you can do for free. But in terms of actual processing, auditing, the services, the life improvement courses, you know, even the very cheapest introductory ones that are £30 are still £30. You can't get them for free unless you volunteer your time to work for the church. Church Scientology doesn't offer any of its services for free. The only things you can get for free are in return for your time volunteering or working for the church. They they very clearly exclude um, the, the poorer members of society as per um, this charity commission document. Um, limiting factors, for example, charging for a charity services. It says you are allowed to charge for your services. Um, but you have to do so in a way that doesn't exclude the poor.
A charity must not be set up to provide benefit only to the organisation's members unless a sufficient section of the public can access those benefits by becoming members or the membership structure, structure is a suitable way of carrying out the charity's purposes of public benefit. So if you wanted to become a member of the Church of Scientology, the only membership um, body that exists is the IAS, the International Association of Scientologists, which is free for six months when you first join. After that, you have to pay an annual fee to be a member of the IAS. Now, you don't have to be a member of the IAS to get servicing in the Church of Scientology. You can just walk in and pay for services. You do get a discount if you are um, a member of the IAS. But if you're not a member of the IAS, um, are you technically a member? Don't know. That's a question the Charity Commission would want to ask. Because the Church of Scientology would say, no, you don't have to be a member of the IAS to receive services. And they would go, OK, well, if you're a member of the public that isn't a member of the IAS, but they want to receive your services, what's what's the price? What's the cheapest you can do that for? And they would find very quickly that actually that price is exclusionary. It's, it excludes the, the poorest members and those who are most in need in the UK. We scroll down a little bit here, it says very clearly that charities can charge the services. However, where the charities charges are more than the, what the poor can afford, its trustees must run the charity in a way that does not exclude those who are poor. It says, for example, if we carry on scrolling, this document is fascinating, by the way. Examples of charges that the poor can usually afford include, now this is the Charity Commission just giving an example of where a fee that a charity could charge would be acceptable and considered not um, exclusionary. You know, membership fees of a few pounds paid by local residents hire out of Village Hall. Small entry fees to attend events at a community centre or visit an historic house or site. The cost of an annual library card, low ticket prices to see a production by an Amdram society, low hourly fees to use charity public internet terminal, a small subscription or membership fees to join a playgroup, the scouts, the guides. You know, these are all things that cost a few pounds. These are not things that cost thousands of pounds as Scientology services do. Now, Things like the introductory services will cost a lot less. You know, the first course I ever did in Scientology was £30. But that's still a lot more than these um, examples of things that charities can charge for that is acceptable and doesn't exclude the poorest of the community. Now, that's all I kind of had time for today that I really wanted to go through. Just if the Char if the Charities Commission were to accept the Church of Scientology's um application at some point if they were to reapply it would be more work than they would be up for yes they would like it because they'd have this badge on their name but they have a lot to prove and i don't think they're going to be able to do it let me know what you guys think down below and if there's anything you want me to cover in my next video um, leave a comment if you want to support the channel you can always buy me a coffee with the link in the description or head to the, the channel there's a link there as well uh, but the best way of supporting is commenting liking sharing all that sort of stuff so thank you for sticking with me and I will see you guys on the next one